my dad, my son, David, and oh man, so many things that uh, really gets to me, you know, it's, it's very hard to explain um, those, uh, uh, those memories of uh, the long roads and, uh, you know, just flat tires. <laughs> uh, yeah, who made, who made uh, trailers hauling that, you haul through the gigs and, uh, you know, every 30 minutes, a blowout, man, boom. <laughs> we had about three spare tires in the truck, you know, so we can, here it goes, man, paddle. But uh, we we managed, you know, to do the gigs and uh, so many experiences that I've gone through. And uh, when I started uh, crossing over uh, with, uh, Sir Douglas Quintet, uh, Doug Sam, Ray Cooter, Ray Cooter, Bob Dylan, oh, so many uh, guys, Holy you know, Holy Souls, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was quite an experience for me, and um, you know, I didn't even expect it that uh, I was going to be part of. Uh, so uh, giants, you know, in the music uh, industries or, you know, and thanks for the exposure that, uh, like you saw right now, uh, Les Blank, uh, Chris uh, Strackwitz and the whole gang, you know, so they managed to put uh, this, um, um, this scene of uh, what we've gone through uh, through the years, you know, as far as music is concerned. So um, I think I'm very satisfied what, what I've done, gone through. And uh, a little older now, I'm 50 now and... <laughs> <laughs> well, what, tell us what you remember about the making of the film, about Les coming out with his cameras and, and how that all came about. Uh, 
I think it was uh, Ray Cooter was the one that introduced me to uh, to Les Blanc, to uh, Chris Strakowitz, and through him, then we managed to you know to uh, film this. But what you just saw a while ago. Awesome. And uh, when was the last time you saw the film? Uh, I think I see it every day, man. Right here. <laughs> Of course, I don't sing like Lydia Mendoza, but still, yeah. I don't have that voice. Well, I want to uh, get to Herod and Marine here in just a second, but uh, Flacco, I'm so curious to know from you, sitting here and watching it with us, what, uh, what has, has uh, changed the most and what has stayed the same in terms of uh, Tejano music and, and uh, your playing? Well, um, in some ways it has uh, changed a bit, you know, because of uh, change of instrumentations, too many, um, like uh, the, the handle thing with uh, synthesizers and all that stuff, you know. So it's not the nitty gritty of our kind of music. No, they have so many things now, you know, like, uh, uh, but good bands know, like Lil Joe and the Joe, Lil Joe, La Familia. Yeah, yeah great guy. And there's uh, many, you know, many conjuntos still in uh, our, uh, you know, um, Tejano bands. Um, no, uh, the, the group of uh, Selena and uh, so many things that's happening right now in the young generation. So uh, I, I think I've been lucky to uh, be here, you know, to to uh, the tell the people that I, w I went through the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and uh, now, I mean, I'm, I've been quite uh, lucky, you know, to be around still. Yeah, okay. <laughs> A lot of noise. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. That's right. Okay, I'm gonna, okay, okay, I'm gonna just smack it on to you, man. I'll be 80 uh, in March 11th. Let's bring Herod and Marine into the conversation here, because we just saw a beautiful, oh, this, yeah, this, man. Is, this is the remastered print, correct? Oh man, so, we've been oh, buddies for a long time, man. Thanks, Rain, for, for your participation with Chris. And um, you've been part of uh, my career, helping me out and a lot of musicians. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> So talk about your involvement in the film here. And, well, and, yeah. Let's go back uh, in time a bit. When I was in high school in Santa Cruz, California, Les was making this movie, and Chris Drockwitz, and so uh, Flacco was always this big star for me, and, uh, and the culture. I, I always really appreciated uh, Mexican culture, but Tex-Mex culture as well, and the music and all of that. So. I, um, when, Les, um, when Les was sick in 2012, he said that the two most important films that he wanted me to work on were A Poem as a Naked Person starring Leon Russell and trying to get the rights to it, which we did, and then Chulas Fronteras, which is actually was made after the Leon Russell film. So it went Clifton Chenier, Hot Pepper, then it went A Poem as a Naked Person, and then it went Chulas Fronteras. So I've always idolized Flacco here, and, and you're a big star to me, and you're still you're still a big star, and I think uh, you're you're going to resonate for forever in this movie. Oh man, I'm, I'm going to take forever. you. I'm going to take you to McDonald's, man. <laughs> <laughs> Last wouldn't like that. Last wants tacos. He wants tacos al pastor. No McDonald's. But uh, this movie has been to India, and. Uh, 30 people worked 25 days to remove every speck of dust in this movie. Wow. And we've been working on this for two years to clean it up. You've never seen it this clean. This is clean. And this is the premiere, right? This and you is, guys are about to take it on tour. We did it at South by Southwest, but it had a couple, a couple issues which we fixed. And this is the first time it's ever shown. It's totally done now. And we yeah. actually have... Um, we have uh, Blu-rays available, which has never been on Blu-ray, which is high definition. So those are in the lobby. We got a handful of copies. We don't have enough. We can sell some 
we thought we have, but uh, it's going to be released hopefully in March. And there's been talk of a, a group in LA using the movie to register young Latino voters to go against Trump next year. Yeah. So, Flacco, you, you might start a whole movement. You might start a movement. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> well, that leads nicely into a question I had for Maureen, because we got to talking last night uh, at the party after Flacco's performance, and um, you were mentioning that um, you used to live here in Austin, and that this is one of your first films to work on with Les. So I, I want to ask you first about how you became involved. So tell us how you, how you got involved in this film. film. Yeah. Um, well, I worked with Les for the first time in 72 to 70, like, four, I guess, on um, Dry Wood and Hot Pepper and A Home is a Naked Person. Those are the first two films I did sound recording and assistant editing on. And then I moved to Austin um, and lived here for a couple of years and, or maybe it was a year to begin with and then two years later, but um, when Les was filming To Las Fronteras and Del Mero Corazon with, with Chris Strockwitz, they came through town and I did get to go to one of the dances that Flacco played when they were filming. And the, um, when it was time to do editing, Les called on me to do the assistant editing. So I left Austin, went to Berkeley, and stayed there for a year and did assistant editing and worked also on subtitles, some of the translations. And for me, um, it really opened up a whole world. I mean, I wasn't exposed to Mexican culture and Latino culture when I was growing up. And so it was kind of new for me to under, start to understand it. And when I started working on the translations of the songs, I just thought, oh my God, there's where the passion is. In addition to the, you know, the, the squealing notes on the accordion and the, and the um, you know, the booming bajo. And so um, I started to really get into it and it really opened up a whole world. And I went on to do a film later on in um, southern Mexico on um, a culture called um, the Zapotec culture in Huchitan, Oaxaca. And um, between the 70s and now, I finally feel like I can speak some Spanish. <laughs> it took all that time to feel like I can actually hold my own in it. And now it feels like, you know, Mexico is my second home and South, South Texas is also one of my homes, and um, I still have a lot of friends in Austin who I appreciate very much, and get to see them sometimes. And and yeah, um, that volver volver came out good. She <laughs> said volver volver. Yeah. So yeah. For, those, for those of you who don't know, Maureen is also yeah, a singer. It was, it and was, we found out last yeah. night it was when she got on stage yeah. and did a duet with Flacco here. <laughs> it was with both, Pepe Plowman, who is yeah, she's broken, a singer. Uh, broken English and broken Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I noticed that Chula's Frontiers means beautiful borderlands, and the film feels very politically relevant today, and I, I'm sure it was also a political statement back, I assume it was, in 76 when you made it. Can you talk about that and how it still resonates today? Yeah, well, I mean, sadly, the, I mean, some of this stuff is still totally contemporary, and um, I mean, the good part is that the feeling and the culture has has persisted, and the beauty of the culture has persisted. And even though some of the clothing might look a little different from now, the words are totally relevant in the songs, and um, the music is still there, and the um, the cultural traditions that are captured in the film. I mean, the family picnics, the you know, the the um, piñata with the little kids, and the, all the family really good family stuff that happens in Mexican-American culture is totally relevant. And then the farm workers are still in the same plight that they were way back in the 70s. And it, I mean, it doesn't look like out of date, you know. Um, and of course now we've heard all these horrific labels on Mexicans and Mexican-Americans that just are like out there and do not work. And so, in some ways, we feel like this film being re-released, it's a good time for it because people need to really get reminded or exposed to, if they're not familiar with it, the beauty of Mexican and Mexican-American culture 
and that it's an antidote to what's going on right now. Um, I promised Flacco that we would only keep this very short to half an hour, and that's about where we are now. So um, I know probably a lot of you guys want to keep talking, so please join us in the lobby for a drink. Uh, and come get your picture taken with Flacco. Tell him how much you appreciate him because we have a national treasure here on stage with us tonight. Uh, and please say hi to Herod and Maureen and just come hang out with us in the lobby. Thank you very much for being here, everybody. We really appreciate it. Happy holidays. Thank you.